By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Highlander 93-94 online tournament. This is the second match that I've played in my group stages. The first match was on this same channel last week. If you've missed that, click on the info card that's appearing right now to check that out. And then you can continue to this match, my second one. And today I am playing against Ishan. And Ishan is also playing with Red Green. So I'm playing Red Green Tuknir. And so is Ishan. Well, he's playing Red Green without the Tuknir, but uh, it's pretty similar. So it's kind of a mirror match that we are going to look at today. And in the deck decks, I'm going to discuss the subtle differences between the decks, but I can already tell you there are not that many. Ooh, right? Um, anyway, before I start with the deck decks though, I would first like to uh, maybe discuss this uh, format a little bit. So we're playing Highlander 93-94. This is basically uh, a format based on Canadian Highlander. That means we're playing with a 100 card singleton deck. But of course, because it's 93-94, we're only playing with the sets, uh, with the old school set. So here you can see an overview and we also have a point system. So you cannot spend more than 10 points on the uh, cards with points on them. So you've got to make some tough decisions. There are no auto includes of power here because you got to decide what power you want to play, what power you don't want to play. And in the deck decks, I will discuss the choices as well that the players have made to kind of spend their power. Now, before I start with the deck deck section of this uh, video, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that you can also choose to skip this, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find a timestamp, several of them actually, and one of them reads MTG Games. If you click on MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the match. Now here, we're going to continue with the deck decks. And here we see the deck of Ishan. So this is called uh, Beasts of the Highlands. I really like that name, by the way, because it's Highlander, the Highlands. It makes sense, you know, it's that whole Scottish vibe as well that you kind of have with Highlander, you know. If you've seen the movie, you probably know what I mean. Anyway, uh, looking at the list, I see a lot of cards that I'm playing with as well, but I also see some differences, and that's quite interesting. Certain cards you've chosen to put in your deck that I think, hmm, why didn't I put them in my deck? Now, first of all, I think it's super cool that you're playing with Sheevan Dragon. I'm a little bit embarrassed that I'm not playing with Sheevan Dragon because I'm playing red, right? So shouldn't you automatically include your Sheevan? I didn't do it because my strategy is a little bit more aggro, maybe. Maybe that's why that was my reasoning. At least I thought it's a bit too expensive to cast. I mean, then again, it's a Sheevan Dragon. I should have played the one-off. Anyway, it is in your deck, so hopefully, well, hopefully for you, we get to see it. Um, and then a few cards that I think maybe I missed while I was designing my deck. Um, Orcish Artillery, I think, is a really good card, right? You can tap it to deal two damage to any target, and then it deals three damage to you. So, of course, it hurts you more, but you can get value out of this, right? If you use it right, you can really, like, kill some of those, you know, high-profile, valuable creatures with your artillery. And I think it's worth it. You know, I think it's such a strategical card. You know, it's three to cast. It's a one three itself. It's not too bad. You know, that, that ability is really good. So, I mean, I'm liking it. I think I should have played it. Then there's a card that I consciously didn't play. I thought about playing it, but I decided not to because of the double red in the casting cost. I tried to kind of, uh, in my deck building, tried to make sure I didn't have a lot of double green and double red just for consistent consistency's sake. Now, I did end up with playing some cards with double green, especially actually double red, not so many. I, I believe I've got a Brothers of Fire, which you don't actually, which is quite interesting. Um, but you're playing with cave people. Now cave people, quite interesting. I really like the art of Drew Tucker, uh, two red and one to cast for this uh, one four creature. But if you attack with it, it gets a uh, plus one minus two. So it actually becomes a two two creature, which I think is really funny. And it has this really cool ability that it can give other creatures mountain walk. So you can tap it and it can give target creature mountain walk. You do have to pay some mana for it, which is a pretty hefty cost, but I think later in the game, this could be really good. Also considering the fact that I'm playing with mountains. So against me, it's really valuable. Can you imagine, you know, uh, giving your Sheevan Dragon mountain walk and then it's unblockable? You know, that's really a big problem uh, for me. Then when we're looking at the, these are the creatures of the deck. When we're looking at the spells of the deck, we see a card like Immolation, which I think is really good. It's a card I don't play, I think, but I should have, you know, plus two, minus two. This is a card from Legends, and Enchant Creature. What I like so much about this card is you can use it both ways. You can use it to kill off a creature of your opponent 
or you can use it to make one of your creatures stronger. I mean, you know, let's say you want to attack with your cockatrice, all of a sudden your cockatrice turns into a 4-2 attacker, you know, 4 through the air with that cockatrice ability. That can be, you know, pretty scary for the opponent. So again, I think it's a really cool card and maybe I should have played with it as well. Then there's a card that I thought about but didn't include uh, and you obviously did and that is Blood Moon. So Blood Moon is of course good but remember uh, all the non-basic lands here are restricted. Then again, I mean, you're going to find a lot of decks that still play with the Pendlehaven. Everybody plays with their duels. Everybody plays with their City of Brass. Uh, people are going to play with their factories. So it's still going to take out a lot of lands. People are going to play with Strip Mine probably, although it's pointed, but still. So, I mean, maybe Blood Moon is better than I think it is. So I didn't put it in. I thought it doesn't have enough targets because you've got so many basics in the Highlander format. But... I mean, looking at your list, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should have played Blood Moon. And I love the synergy between Blood Moon and your Mountain Walkers, right? You've got Mountain Yeti that has Mountain Walk. And, of course, the Cave People that can give other creatures Mountain Walk. So I love that little trick in there. Um, yeah, you know, overall, this looks like a very solid list. I think it's going to be a really close match because our decks, they just... They're, they're almost the same, right? We're basically doing the same thing. We want to drop creatures really fast. We've got some X spells, you know, th that's what we do. And we have made some different choices. But I think with this format, 100 card singleton, I think luck will probably be the decider here in this matchup. Anyway, this is the list of Ishan. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here we see my deck, Welcome to the Ether, and that is a reference to Tuknir Deathlock, a card that's also in this deck. Actually, the deck is built around Tuknir, uh, my idea of, of making the deck started with this card. So this is a 2-2 flyer, a legendary creature, and uh, it's actually an explorer of the Ether if you read the flavor text. And what I really like about this is that it has like a mini giant growth on there, right? I can pay a green, a red, and a tap, and then target creature gains plus two, plus two until end of turn. So I think that's quite sweet. There are a few tricks in the deck with the, t the Tuknir. For example, Dwarven Warriors, I can make a creature unblockable, then pump it later with the Tuknir. Or um, I also have, for example, Tracker in the deck, so I can make it a 4-4 and then it can kill out a bigger creature. But I mean, above all, I think, you know, a 2-2 flyer that can pump another creature could be useful in this deck. When we're looking uh, at the strategy of this deck, by the way, it's really your red-green strategy, right? So it is an aggro deck uh, that wants to just wants to have the perfect curve. The first three, four turns, all I really want to do is play a creature and turn a creature sideways. Play a creature, turn a creature sideways, right? I really try to swarm my opponent by playing out all my creatures. And if the game takes longer than expected, I can always win it with an X spell, right? I'm playing Fireball, this Integrate, Dwarven Catapult, Earthquake. Uh, I'm playing with, uh, with Hurricane. I'm playing with Detonate. So th the first goal is to start of the game, I'm going to try to deploy my creatures, like I said deal some damage and then finish it off with direct damage. Now, if that plan doesn't work, I do have a few like bigger creatures in the deck, a bit more controlling creatures like a Cockatrice, like a Thicket Basilisk, uh, also the Killer Beast, which is a gr great way to sink my mana in. I'm also playing with a Two-Headed Giant. So it's not all small stuff. I'm also playing with some bigger creatures so that later in the game, I also have a chance to kind of, to kind of win and it, it's not an, an auto loss if the game takes a little bit longer. Uh, another card I really like talking about the long game is a Thelonite Druid, which is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green and 2 from Fallen Empires. And I can tap the Druid, sacrifice a creature, and then all my forests turn into 2-3 creatures, which I think is kind of cool. I think this is one of the, the stronger cards that you don't see that often, but it can really win you the game uh, out of nowhere. Now, um, maybe it's also good to kind of mention how I spent my points, so you can spend 10 points on the um, cards with points on them. And I've chosen to go for uh, Mox Emerald, Mox Ruby, and Soul Ring. So I really went for the Mana Ramp. The decision, um, I, I did that because I just want to go really quickly. I want to be able to just play everything out. And also I, I figured out that looking at the amount of X spells I have in my deck, the Soul Ring could be really, really good later in the game because yeah, it just adds those two points of damage to your Disintegrate or your Fireball or whatever X spell you're playing. So. I think it's kind of good. It was a tough choice, though, because I think that, for example, a Library of Alexandria would have been quite good in here. And there are, there are some other choices that I could have made, but I really chose to go with uh, the uh, the mana ramping uh, kind of plan. So I thought, you know, let's just go for the two mocks and, uh, and the soul ring. Anyway, this is uh, the deck that I'm playing with today. We talked about the deck of my opponent, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. 
Game number one, here we go. And I'm sitting on the right. I believe I'm on the play. So I'm playing with my Welcome to the Ether deck. It's basically red, green, aggro, Highlander, 100 card singleton format. And I'm taking on Ishan. He's also on red, green. His deck is called Beasts of the Highlands. Ooh, look at that. I've got a turn one play. There's the Asp. So it's a 1-1 one, one creature from Arabian Nights. And when it deals damage, you take another point of damage during your next upkeep, unless you pay one before your next upkeep. So ideally it can deal two points of damage or at least take out a land of the opponent. Ishan here not having a one drop. Just playing the forest, passing the turn. So that means at least I can swing in, playing a mountain here. So I'm going to put Ishan here on 19 and he's going to get that Asp counter. Now the thing is with this counter is uh, you can pay it straight away. So he still has a land open. So he can just pay for it, tap it, and then the counter is gone. If he doesn't, though, then he takes the damage at the next turn's upkeep. And so we're kind of discussing the card here. I remember because a lot of players tend to forget that you don't have to pay the one during your upkeep. You can already pay it in the turn of your opponent if you have, of course, mana open. It looks like, though, he's taking an extra point of damage here from the Asp. Going to drop to 18. Yeah, and here we're kind of discussing it. Look, he's going to look it up. <laughs> I have to say it was quite tempting for me to just let him take the point of damage. Because remember, we are playing in a tournament, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to diss bad karma. I'm not going to do that. And it's always nice to kind of talk about cards you don't see that often. Uh, here we see a grizzly bear, which is a 2-2 vanilla. Beautiful art by Jeff Mengus. Who I've actually met in person last year. He's a really nice guy. I met him in Sweden. He would see a chain lightning on the bear. The bear is toast and I just keep attacking here, trying to put pressure on Ishan. I mean, I have to say it's a little, I was a little in doubt. Do I want to use like good removal, like a chain lightning on a grizzly bear? But I thought, okay, you know, I'm playing aggressive. So now, of course, Ishan is in kind of a difficult situation here because he untaps and in his upkeep, he has to decide, am I going to pay that extra point? Yes or no? And of course, he still had to take the normal damage from the Asp. So he's on 18 right now. And now he has to decide, am I going to pay the one? And he's not. So he is going to drop to 17. So, I mean, that's kind of nice, right? There are moments where, where the Asp will just put in that extra point of damage, which just feels really good. You're like getting value out of your card. Here we see Ishan tapping two. What is he going to do? Okay, there's an... Elfish Archer, so a 2-1 with First Strike. That's, of course, a problem for me. I'm also playing the Archer, by the way, in my deck. Playing a Forest here, having three lands, so three mana in total. Let's see what I can do. Tapping three. There's a Granite Gargoyle, so the 2-2 Flyer with that awesome flavor text. And for one red, you can give it plus zero, plus one. So that's going to fly over the Archer. I mean, flavor-wise, maybe the Archer should have had Reach, right? Because he can... You know, point his bow and arrow to the skies, obviously. Ishan here drawing his card for turn. He's on 17. I'm still on 20. Ishan with five cards in hand. It seems I have four cards in hand. Ooh, look at him attack here, being aggressive, putting me on 18. And there we see Ishan playing something out second main. Okay. Wow, that giant spider is really good. It stops the asp, stops the granite gargoyle, and it's a problem for me here. Playing a mountain here. Tapping four. Okay, what do I have for four? Oh, there's the Tuknir. So uh, he is the man of the deck. It started for me all with the Tuknir. So Tuknir is a 2-2 two -two flyer and I can pay a red and a green and tap the Tuknir to give target creature plus two, plus two. So that's really sweet. I can make, for example, my Gargoyle into a 4-4. Four -four. Do have to keep the mana open then, of course. Passing the turn here to Ishan. Didn't have a good attack open because of that giant spider. But uh, it looks like next turn I can start hopefully dealing some damage again. So Ishan, four cards in hand, 17. I've got three cards in hand, 18. So it's a very close match so far. And we're kind of both doing what you would expect our decks to do. Just play out a lot of creatures. Kind of clog the board. Ooh, there's the attack with the 2-1. Look at that, taking the damage without even thinking about it. Like, I was really, uh, yeah, not 
considering a block, which makes sense though, because it's a 2-1 first striker, of course. So this is good for Ishan, right? He's already dealt four points of damage with the archer, which is quite nice. Tapping three here, are we also going to see a gargoyle from Ishan? No, we're going to see an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. And the often troll, of course, 2-2. Two, two. And for one red, you can regenerate the troll. Pretty good creature. And now I'm going to attack here. So I've got my mana open to use my Tuknir. And this is ideal, right? Because if Ishan blocks, I'm going to use the Tuknir. If he doesn't, I'm probably going to use the mana to cast like more creatures. So I'm in a really good position here. And I think when you're Ishan, you're just going to take this damage. It looks like he's a little bit in the tank. Perhaps he's got a Giant Grove, for example. He could play Giant Grove and Giant Spider and gobble up the Gargoyle. And nope, he's just taking the damage. Gonna go to 15. So Ishan on 15, I'm on 16. But now, of course, he again has that attack open with both the Often Troll and the Elvish Archer. So hopefully in second main, I can like cast a good blocker for the Archer. Oh, look at that. It looks like I'm still contemplating of doing something. Oh, I'm gonna play a Berserk. Okay, that is interesting. I'm not quite sure why I'm playing the Berserk here. And if I do, I should probably pump it with Tuknir as well, making it a 4-4 and then play the Berserk. So this is interesting. I wonder why I'm doing this. Maybe I've got something in hand. So dealing that extra damage, meaning Ishan's... Oh, and then I'm playing a Wheel of Fortune. I guess I just want to empty my hand, but... Mm, I'm, I just, I'm not really feeling this play, to be honest. I mean, I get it and I don't get it. Anyway, playing the Wheel of Fortune. Gonna draw seven. I don't think I had a land drop this turn, so hopefully I can find a land. But I mean, this is risky because I'm going to pass the turn to Ishan here. He's going to untap with seven new cards in hand, draw card number eight. Like, Wheel of Fortune is a great card, but I mean, in this moment in the game, it's kind of risky. I guess my other cards in hand must have been really bad. Anyway, playing uh, a mountain here, using it straight away to play a Curd Ape, which is really good. Wow, I'm lucky finding that because Curd Ape, of course, is a 2-3 because I've got forests. And that means I can use it to block the Often Troll and the Elvish Archer. So that's a bit of a pity here for, uh, for Ishan, but really good news for me because I've got a blocker for those creatures. Let's see what Ishan can find. Of course, he now has eight cards in hand, dropping a land here, so seven in hand still. I mean, that's kind of scary. He's got enough mana to cast a Sheevan Dragon, right? And we know it's in his deck. Please don't let it be the Sheevan. Anyway, tapping one single green. Okay, Burst of Paradise I can live with. <laughs> that I can handle. That is fine. Tapping a red. Oh, there's a Curd Ape of his own. Also a 2-3, of course, because we have forests enough. Passing the turn, I guess. If he does, it's actually not that bad. I mean, I'm actually kind of happy. It looks like he's now considering, do I still want to attack? Nope, he's passing the turn, and I, I'm not unhappy with this. You know, Birds of Paradise, Curd Ape, I mean, I can deal with that. Six cards in hand, now playing a Forest. Tapping a red and a green. For a Wailuli Wolf, so card from Arabian Nights, a 1-1. I can tap it to give target creature plus one, plus one. Also tapping a green. Ooh, more creatures hitting the board. A lot of elves. A mana dork, the mana dork, of course, of magic. 1-1, one, one, you can tap it for one green mana. That is an auto-include in almost every green deck. Looks like there's a pass from my side of the table as well. So I have to say, both of us not really playing any impactful cards after that Wheel of Fortune. And I still wonder if the wheel was the right thing to do and if that Berserk was the right thing to do. I probably wanted to get some value out of the Berserk, but yeah, I wonder if that was the right decision. 
Five cards in hand for Ishan. Tapping four mana here. What are we going to see? There's a Dragon Whelp. Okay, that's pretty good. Dragon Whelp, 2-3 creature, and you can uh, pay a red to give it plus 1, plus 0. Oh, you can do that three times, making it a 5-3. If you do it more than that, then it's destroyed at the end of the turn, which is also not too bad. I mean, you can just, it's like a flying bomb. It's great with Berserk. And there's the pass of the turn. So untapping here with six lands, going to draw for turn. There is another mountain. Ishan on 13, I'm on 16. Game number one. And like I said, it's the second game I'm playing in the group stages. I'm going to play four matches in total. So this is the second match. And uh, yeah, really need the points here, of course. I mean, if you win three matches, it's, it's pretty guaranteed you can continue. Tapping a mountain here. Ishan with four cards in hand. Okay, playing a grizzly bear. Okay. I was actually hoping for something better, but uh, <laughs> look, I mean, look at my deck. All these little creatures. Uh, oh, they're not really, uh, they don't really make an impression on me, to be honest. I think, I think whoever here plays like, uh, draws into like a big X spell is really going to have an advantage. And I'm also really curious to see what Ishan's going to do. Like, is he going to attack with the Dragon Whelp, for example? Basically offering a trade with the Tuknir. And one of the things that I can do then is I don't even have to use the Tuknir's ability. I can just um, give the Tuknir plus one, plus one, make it a 3-3 three, three and block the Whelp. There we see the attack. So this makes sense, right? Now, now what am I going to do? So yeah, I'm going to make it a 3-3. Three, three. I guess I'm going to... Offer the trade here. Oh, look at that. Tapping something. There's a giant growth. Okay. I'm a little bit surprised about this giant growth again. Because, I mean, he can just blow it up. So maybe I forgot about the fact that he can blow it up. Oh, is this a takesy backsy? Is this a... T yeah, I think I'm realizing now that... I've made a mistake here, so I'm asking if I can take it back. I'm doing a takesy backs here. Oh, 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 that's bad. That is bad. Playing a Fisher instead. Taking care of the whelp. I kind of realized my mistake in the nick of time, I guess, but still. Really nice of Ishan to uh, allow me to take back the giant growth there. It does mean here that I've uh, used my Fisher on the Whelp. There we see the Goblin Balloon Brigade. So it's a 1-1 one, one. for one red. You can give it flying. There is the pass turn. And drawing for turn here. Let's see. Another mountain. I mean... It's not great. It's kind of, we're kind of in a standstill here. Yeah, and now he knows I've got the giant growth, so I'm attacking with the 2-2. Two -two. And he can block on the spider, and then he knows that I'm going to use the, the giant, giant growth probably to kill the spider. Let's see what he's going to do. something up his sleeve is going to give the goblin balloon brigade flying is he just going to chump with the brigade that's also an option of course that's what he's going to do i mean and if you think back at it you know i had that berserk if i would have just kept it in hand for a later moment with the wheel oh well that's that's all in the past, I'm just thinking it, it, it works so well with the Wailuli Wolf, with the Tuknir, with the Giant Grove. All those cards are really good in combination with that Berserk. I have to say this game one, I'm not really impressed with, uh, with how I'm playing the game. 
So hopefully I'll, I'll improve a little bit after this first game. I'm still in it at least, and so is Ishan, of course. He's on 13, I'm on 16. One card in hand for both of us. No, three cards for Ishan, actually, it seems. Oh, there's a Disintegrate. Taking care of business here. Is that a Disintegrate on the Tukmir? I wonder. I mean, if it is, he should pay a lot more because I have got the Wailuli Wolf. Got the giant growth. I think we're just we're discussing this. The thing is, I mean, I really like it. We're playing casual. We're like super relaxed. Uh, exactly. Look at Ishani. You're putting a lot more in. Or is he playing it directly on my life total? That's another option. Ooh, is he doing that now? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He could go for nine. Oh, look at that! I'm gonna drop to seven. Disintegrate for nine to the face to the dome. Going to drop here to seven. And what I wanted to say is that, um, you know, one of the things is when you, you see that you've made a mistake like me and the Giant Grove or earlier Ishan with the Asp. And of course, we're all friendly with each other. So we're saying like, oh, but maybe that's better to do. Um, I do believe that in the end, you do become a better Magic player if that is your goal. If you just, you know, accept your mistake, a mistake is a mistake. Uh, then again, you know, yeah, it's, you know what I mean? Let me know in the comments below how you feel about it. Attacking here with the 2-2. I do think, of course, when your opponent is a little bit more relaxed and allows you to say, you know what, you made that mistake, take it back. Then, of course, you also do it for your opponent. You know, that's, that's of course, a given. That makes sense. Anyway, attacking here with the Tukmir, still having that giant growth in hand. Ishan is tapped out completely after that disintegrate. I'm on seven. He is blocking here. And yeah, then of course I am going to play that Giant Grove. So now the Giant Grove is also out of the way. So we're kind of back to square one now, which is good. Tapping four in my second main. Ooh, there's a Juggernaut. So Juggernaut, it's not going to do much because of the off control, but maybe in combination with like a more aggressive strategy. Remember, I have the Wolf and of course the Duke near itself to pump creatures up, for example. If I attack with my Curd Ape and use the Tuknir and the Waluli Wolf on the Curd Ape, I can make a 3-4, um, a 5-6 a creature, which is pretty good. Let's see if Ishan can find anything. I am pretty low, of course. If it can find another X spell, it could be over. Ooh, Argovian Pixies. That's so good for the Juggernaut. Remember, all damage dealt to the Pixies by artifacts is reduced to zero. So this is ideal. There is a Barbary Apes. And uh, Ishan's hand is now empty. I'm also in top decking mode, by the way. My Tukmir at the top of my army. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is bad news for me. Have to attack, of course, with the Juggernaut. But my plan probably was before that Argovian Pixies hit the board to kind of attack with two or maybe even three creatures with Wailuli Wolf and Tukmir open to, to potentially... Uh, pump the creatures, but yeah, that plan's out of the window with that Argovian Pixies. Let's see what I top decked here. Tapping three. Oh, Killer Bees. That is really good. Killer Bees, a 0-1 flyer from Legends. This is a copy from the Chronicles edition. Or fourth, was it printed in fourth edition of Chronicles? I can't remember. Anyway, I can now attack with it. Uh, you can pay your green to give it plus one, plus one. So it can get really big. Only have three forests though, and of course the Lana Elves, I guess. So I, I can, I can pump it. I can deal four damage with it. Ishan not having any flyers. Well, he does have the Birds of Paradise to jump, so that could be a possibility for him. Ishan having one card in hand now, really thinking, what can I do? I mean, he is on the higher life total, still on thirteen. Is he considering like an all-out attack? I don't think that would be beneficial for him at this stage, but. Maybe he's got some kind of instant trick in his hand there. Nope, it's just the forest, playing the forest, passing the turn. So let's see what I'm going to do. Obviously, I have to attack with the Juggernaut, but I can also attack, of course, with that uh, Killer Bees. That is really good. Also finding a forest, so playing it out, that means some more pumping power for the bees. Attacking here with the Killer Bees and the Juggernaut. There we go. I wonder what Ishan's going to do here. 
Yeah, look at that. He's going to block. Oh, this makes sense. Yeah, because he can regenerate the often troll. And the damage dealt to the pixies is reduced to zero. So he is going to kill that, uh, that juggernaut, unfortunately. I mean, I can keep it alive by using the Tuknir. That's something I can do. I haven't used the Tuknir's ability at all, by the way. Am I going to finally use it? I think I am. Oh, look at me using it. So I'm going to pump the Juggernaut, meaning it survives. And of course, Ishan's going to pay the red to regenerate the Uftan Troll. And it looks like he's not blocking the Killer Bees. Or is he? I was, of course, also attacking with the Killer Bees. Putting three mana into it. Am I? It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. I'm not sure why I would be in the tank because if he's not blocking it, I just need to pump all the green that I've got into the killer bees. I could even consider pumping it with the wolf as well. I mean, he's on 13. I can, with the Lunderer Elves, I can put four green in. So deal four damage. He would drop to nine. I wonder what I'm going to do here. Yep, I am going to put the three mana in, it seems. Deal three points of damage. Oh, four, because I've got... No, I only got three green, so I think Ishan should have taken three points instead of four. It looks like he's now taken four points of damage. I think, I'm not quite sure what's happening here, but I think he should have only taken the three points, so he should be on 10. I mean, it looks like we're having some discussion about that as well. Anyway, Ishan's for some reason on nine. I mean, every life point counts in this matchup, I feel. One card in hand here for Ishan. We're both in top decking mode, so this is a super close match. This is actually what you can expect from a, a mirror match like this. And I think we're kind of counting, because Ishan, of course, he's worried. He's like, okay, you've got that killer bees. And I mean, I can only chump block once. I mean, that, that bees is going to kill me. And now you've got three creatures tapped down. Is this a moment for me to attack? And I'm afraid the answer, though, is no. I mean, he can attack, for example, with the Kurt Ape. Uh, then I can block it on the Kurt Ape. Um, he can attack with, with the Barbary Ape as well, or the Ufton Troll as well. But then, yeah, it's tough. It looks like I've got, like, blocks. I could use my Wolf to pump my Bear. It's a difficult scenario here. And I think Ishan, and, and rightfully so, is, is really taking his time right now to think, okay, is there a way through? But I think what he has to hope for, okay, there's a lightning bolt. What is he going to bolt? Is he going to go to the face? Is he going to take that risk? Or is he going to take out one of the creatures? Yeah, this is quite interesting. I mean, he could take out the killer bees here. Because I can only pump it to three. So, I mean, that looks like the best target for that lightning bolt. Exactly. Taking out the killer bees. This makes sense. And, of course, Ishan was really taking his time because he's thinking, if I, you know, can squeeze four points of damage in with that lightning bolt, maybe then, you know, I can win the game. I mean, he's so close. But this is really good for him, taking care of basically the only real threat, right? The Killer Bees. Of course, I can still attack with my Tuknir, which is a 2-2 flyer. So uh, that's a bit of an issue for him. But then again, you know, he can, he can still jump at first and draw, draw a few cards before he's dead. You know, he's still on 9. But let's first see what I can find here. Drawing a card for turn. I mean, this is one of these games where I feel like it'll be decided by the person who first draws... Uh, into a fireball or maybe even a hurricane you know that's the nice thing about ishan he's on nine so if he finds that hurricane there's still a win for him and for me you know it's it's it would be really tough 
So I've got the 2 2 Tuknir. So I think what I need to do here is just attack with the Tuknir and the Juggernaut. Of course, have to attack with the Juggernaut. Um, and maybe just accept it if the Juggernaut dies to that double block. I mean, let it be, you know. Exactly attacking here with the, with the 2. This makes sense. I'm just keeping all my other creatures on blocking duty. I don't care. <laughs> it's such a standstill. The board's so gummed up. Well, it's actually not a standstill because there's still attacks happening. And of course, for me, that flying creature is really, really good. And let's see if Ishan's going to chump or not. And I think the reason, if he, yeah, the reason that he chumps here, because I really understand, he's like, I want to stay ahead on life. Because then if I draw that Earthquake or if I draw that Hurricane, I can win the game. And if we're both on seven, the best thing that I can do is get a draw. So here we see the double block again, the regeneration of the Often Troll. And uh, the Birds of Paradise dies here to the Tuknir. And there's the past turn. So I'm keeping that one card in hand. I wonder what it is. Probably just a land. A land that wants to pretend to be something important. And I mean, this is a really close match. I mean, Ishan on nine, I'm on seven. And I'm untapping here. Finding a forest. Attacking. Am I going to put him on seven? Yay, putting him on seven. So I'm really happy with this moment in the game because it means if I find an earthquake uh, or a hurricane, it's a draw. If Ishan finds it, it's a draw. You know, that's already some, some outs out of the way here. So really important moment in the match that we're both on seven. He's got five creatures. I've got five creatures to block with. I mean, the thing I've got going for me... Oh, there is the Earthquake. Wow, I was rambling and rambling on. There we see the Earthquake. Is this a draw in game one? I think it is. Or is he gonna, or is he gonna take the risk? No, is he gonna take the risk? He could. He could go uh, Earthquake for one, for example, or for three. Regenerate his often troll, but I mean... Let's see what he's going to do here. Maybe he wants to take the risk. I can use the, the, the Wailuli Wolf to make my Curdape into a 3-4. Make it a little bit bigger, of course. So then he'll have to commit a little bit more. But I mean, that's super risky for him, right? If he would do it for 4, he would drop to 3. And remember, I keep the Tuknir because it's got flying. It's not affected by the Earthquake. That's why I thought it's an auto-draw here. And we're kind of discussing the options. I mean, in general, I have to say, you know, it was a lot of fun to play Ishan, and he's such a nice guy. And we were just talking about all the options all the time. It was almost like we were playing with the same deck. We're like, well, we are kind of playing with the same deck, but you know what I mean? Like, we were like, what's the best thing I can do here? Like, well, maybe this, oh, maybe that. You know, the same thing with those plays that we were able to take back. Like, oh, no, that's really stupid. Can I take it back? Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, oh, it looks like he's going to do it for one. Is he going to do it for one? Wow, that would be... That is, Ishan is really playing with fire here. Not going for that draw, but deciding... I like it, I love your style. But it is super risky. I mean... I'm going to lose two creatures here. You're going to lose two creatures here. I'm not sure if this is in your best interest, to be honest. Uh, the wolf can pump itself, make it into a 2-2. It looks like we're still a little bit in the tank here, kind of discussing. Maybe now I've got to make a difficult decision. Of course, the damage on the creatures is marked. So maybe I'm thinking about, do I want to use my wolf to pump something else up? Now, I'm going to use the wolf to pump himself up. So we're all going to take a damage. We're all on six now. Oh, man. What a thriller of a match. Ishan losing two creatures here. I mean, that's another thing. I think maybe what Ishan could have done, but it's easy looking back at this, is to say I'm first going to attack with those one toughness creatures because I'm going to lose them anyway. Look at that. And now he's attacking with everything with the damage there marked on them. And for the Curdape, that's really relevant, right? Because if I block with the Curdape, it's going to die because it already has a damage marked on it. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to trade here. 
Now he's going to deal two points of damage, right? I'm going to drop to four. Oh, man, this is so close. This is so incredibly close. I'm on four. He's on six. I've got two creatures left. He's got one creature left. Wow, amazing. Oh, there's a regrowth. What do I have in there? Do I have something to deal damage? I've got a chain lightning. Yeah, I got the chain. I can attack, of course, and then play the chain lightning. And that's it. Of course, he can send it back to me, but um, that's it. Wow, wow, wow. What an incredible game number one. This was crazy, Anishan, man. I think we discussed it then as well, but I really respect the fact that you didn't go for the draw and you wanted to find a way to win it. I believe you told me, like, I want it all or nothing. You know, that's what I want to do. That's that's the deck. It's the Beasts of the Highlands. So I appreciate that. I, I respect that, I should say. Anyway, we don't have any sideboards, so we're just going to shuffle up and we will catch back uh, up with you in game uh, number two. Game number two. Here we go. Ishan on the play. After that, a very lucky win for me in game one. And... Uh, we, fee we see a mountain by Ishan, a forest. Looks like I've got a first turn play again. Is it going to be an Asp? No, it's the Lanawar Elves. So good news for me. That means I'm ramping it up here. Passing the turn to Ishan. Let's see what he can do. Playing a forest into a Scavenger Folk. That's pretty good. Scavenger Folk, a card from the dark. One green tap and sack. Destroy target artifact. There is a mountain. I'm gonna tap three. What are we gonna see for three? A gargoyle, perhaps? Ooh, a spitting slug, two, four. Card from the dark. I mean, it's two, four for three mana. That's pretty good stats. And of course, it's a great card to start attacking with, looking at Ishan's side of the board. That scavenger folk, of course, not much of a blocker. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, he missed a land drop here. That is very unfortunate for Ishan. Missing a land drop, especially since I had that Lanawar Elf, so I'm ramping up and he's kind of kind of going down, ramping down, you could say. Attacking here, probably just has to take the damage. Gonna drop here to 18. Four mana for me. I've got quite a lot of creatures for four in the deck. Not playing it though, gonna go with a Whirling Dervish. A 1-1, one, one, and every time it deals damage, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. It's got protection from black, but that's not very relevant in this uh, matchup. Passing the turn here. It's not too bad for Ishan, this Whirling Dervish. Could have been a lot worse. For example, for four mana, I also could have cast uh, an Urnum Jin or a Giant Spider. But couldn't find it. Ishan here... Drawing a card for turn. Again, no lands for him. Oh, that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate. I mean, he has to win this to make it into 1-1-1 one, one, one and play game number three. It is, of course, best of three. Tapping three mana here. There's a lure. This is actually quite nice because now I can attack with the Whirling Dervish and the Lanawar Elves as well. And I'm killing the Scavenger folks. So a lot of value thanks to this lure. He's going to lose the Scavenger Folk, has to block. And that means he's taking two damage. He's going to drop to uh, 16. And more importantly, there's a counter on the Whirling Dervish. It's now a 2-2. Two -two. And this is actually a pretty nice card combination. Having a card with Lure on it next to your Whirling Dervish, that means your Whirling Dervish will always uh, get some damage in. Unless, of course, your opponent has, you know, removal, obviously, but also a maze of it or something. But as long as it's just creatures, it kind of works. Let's see what Ishan can do. Can he finally find a land? He really needs lands. Every turn without a land, he's getting further and further behind. Yeah, this I really feel for Ishan. You remember game one when he could have gone for the draw with the Earthquake? Decided not to. Decided to try to go for the win. He almost succeeded. And then I top decked a Giant Grove. Oh, now he's got a discard, a really good card like the Dragon Whelp. That is so painful. Yeah, and this is just bad luck. You know, this has nothing to do with, uh, with good or bad magic. It's just bad luck. We've all been there, not finding lands or being swamped in lands. 
playing a Kurt Ape here. More pressure to the board, to the Whirling Dervish. Again going up, it's now a 3-3. Ishan already on 11. Yeah, I mean, this is really bad. Again, it looks like he hasn't found a land. And he's looking at two, four, seven, eight points of damage next turn. That would mean he would drop to three. So he's, he only has one more turn after this. Yeah, this is as good as over, it seems, for Ishan. Unless, of course, he can now have a land drop and just play a good creature out. Nope. Oh, look at that. Discarding the Urnum. If he would have just drawn mana as normal, he's got Dragon Whelp. He's got Urnum. Those are like A-class creatures in this matchup. That would have been so good for him. There's the Asp again. I'm just drawing a lot of small stuff here. Attacking. There I go. Dealing two, four, six, eight points of damage. He's going to drop, I believe, to three. Oh, no, I'm going to win it on the spot with a Bloodlust. It is game over, unless Ishan, of course, has some kind of removal. Does he have a Bolt, for example? Nope, he does not. Oh, man, I'm, so, I'm feeling kind of bad about this, Ishan. I'm so sorry, man. He just couldn't find Lance, and I think in game one, we could see what both decks were capable of, and, you know, it was that was such a close. That was such a close first game, you know. That was the real game, you know. This is just what happens sometimes in Magic. We've all been there, you know, you just don't find the lands and you lose. It is part of the game, um, but it is very unfortunate. And look at what he had in hand. Wow. That was an awesome hand. That was absolutely epic, but no lands. I have to, I think if I'm looking at your list, Ishan, I think some of the creatures you're playing with, I should have played with. I think, uh, yeah, you could debate what list is better. Maybe your, your list is actually better than mine. Anyway, uh, it is what it is. This is what happens in Magic. The good news is... The first two players in our group qualify, so Ishan is still very much in the race of making it to uh, the top 16 of this tournament. And uh, I'm doing really well, of course, winning my second match here. Now, if you want to know what happens with me uh, for the rest of the tournament, uh, make sure to, uh, to check in next week as I'm playing against a mono blue deck. Here you can see that matchup, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I think if I can win that two, then I've got three matches, one out of the four. I'm pretty sure then that I qualified for the top 16. So um, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be exciting, an exciting matchup. And also, I haven't played against uh, a mono blue deck yet with this deck, so that's gonna be a first for me. So really curious to see how that uh, is going to go. Now, before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. Let me know, for example, what you thought of that whole Dragon Whelp Giant Grove situation. Maybe I should. I mean, Taxi Baxies. It doesn't, I don't like, I don't like it when I do that. I've got to be honest with myself. I don't like it. I don't want to do it again. It'll probably happen again, but I don't want to do it again. I don't like it. Anyway, um, this is, this is just my opinion. Let, share yours in the comments below. Uh, furthermore, if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And now that that's out of the way, there's one last thing that I'd like to share with you, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page. If you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can join the Patre Patreon program and, of course, our old school Timmy Talks community. The cool thing is, if you're a patron, you get access to the Discord and you can also play in silly tournaments like this. So check out patreon.com slash timmytalks. Oh, yes, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the
Bumba Kajik!